is a big weekend in cold water, and that is where we start the warm up under the lights. Welcome to the warm up presented by Community Sports. I'm Mark Coons, joined by the cold water head coach Chip Otten. And first off, coach, we had a fantastic Friday morning for the John Reed Memorial Scholarship golf outing. You got the community picnic on Saturday. And what better way to get this weekend started with the first football practice of the year, bright and early or late at night? It's officially August. It's got to be good to be out there practicing a little football. Yeah, it's fun. Uh, you know, we talked to the seniors about this idea, and we weren't sure what, what, what their thoughts would be. And um, so they, they were really into it. So I, I think they're way more in, into it maybe than us coaches who might, might be in bed already. But, <laughs> but um, so it's a good change of pace. Like you said, it's a, our community picnic, which is always a, always a fun time this whole weekend. And um, August 1st is that first day, and we thought, well, let's get this thing in and, and uh, try to have a little fun with it, and, and it gets us one, one day closer to, to Pat's. So uh, that's one of the reasons we're, we're, we're taking it on this Saturday. Is this also a way to kind of change things up a little bit? I mean, you guys have played so much football the last several years. Do you, are you looking for ways to, to just freshen things up, make this experience a little bit different for this group of kids? Yeah, no doubt. Um, you know, we, we as we go through the season, sometimes you know you get into that routine. And it's like, oh, here we go again. It's Monday, Tuesday, whatever. And and so so this is one of those things we're we're, we're thinking about uh, talking about maybe going down and watch the Bengals practice in a couple weeks and maybe stop halfway. We all of us coaches know guys that we could stop and practice at somebody else's high school, and and so that would be another another day. Uh, you know, like you said, you get you get kind of get you get bored, and it and it gives them something new. This is really, you know, the kids are really into this, so so it, it does help uh, when you get into that grind. We're not into the grind yet, but just just something to to get them get them off to a good start. 2014, your third straight state championship. Graduated 15 seniors off that class. I know every senior class is a, is a special group, but you look at the talent you graduated. You're gonna have to, I'm sure you're gonna miss those kids. No, no question. Um, you know, every year, you, you, especially when you, when you make a run like that, there's, there's certainly key seniors that, that uh, lead the charge, and, and we had several of those last year. Um, but they're not with us anymore. So, so we, we talk to them about that all the time. Brody's not playing anymore. Uh, big Clune Dog's not playing anymore. Uh, big, I just saw Big Caleb Mayday you know, was going to Finley. He's not, he's not at guard anymore. So, so we, we talk about that, and the, the seniors have typically uh, said, okay, it's our turn, and, and uh, hopefully we can do that again. Speaking of Brody Hoing, off to Eastern Michigan, he missed significant time last year with the knee injury. That allowed Jack Hemmelgarn to get some experience, some important game experience last year. He's obviously back this year as a senior quarterback. Yeah, player. no question. Jack has Jack has earned that earned that right to to be the starter, um, and so he gets first shot at Dylan Toby is a is a is a good six foot four junior that that has a lot of ability. And but Jack Jack has earned this spot and. Um, and so he, he's, we were really confident that, that uh, you know, he can go in there. Like you said, he played three games against Minster, against St. Henry, and against um, Bishop Hartley, three good teams, yeah. and uh, went in there, and, and, and we won those three games. So, so, you know, he should feel good about that. We feel good about that. And so, so um, it's going to be different. It's going to be different than Brody, but, but uh, you know, that, that doesn't mean he can't be successful. Speaking of Bishop Hartley, speaking of it different, they're off the regular season schedule this year. Instead, you have Delphus Jefferson coming here to Coldwater Cavalier Stadium in week two. Jeff Katz, a strong team coming off a playoff appearance, and many think Jefferson could be one of the top teams in the NWC this upcoming yeah, year. Yeah, that's, that's another good good game for us and a huge game for computer points. So I think they were 8-2 and two, um, and made the playoffs last year. So, so it's another playoff team that you put on the schedule and, and uh, open up with Kenton, Kenton as always. And so you start off with, with and then Minster, yeah. game three. So, so you start off with three, uh, three, three quality playoff teams that, that are returning guys. I know Kenton lost quite a few, but, but I know Minster has quite a few back and, and, and along with uh, Jefferson. So good, good start for us, and, and hopefully we got all three of those at home this year, so that, that's, that's unique for us. Yeah, I was going to say, I'll start off with three home games. That's got to give you a little bit of comfort with having so many new kids expecting <clears throat> to step up this year, but to be able to start off those three home games gives you a little bit of sense of relief going into this year yeah I, I think that I think that helps um, but our guys are you know they're used to traveling they don't I, I don't know they, they don't really seem to seem to worry about it too much but but it is going to be it, it'll be nice for us to have six home games I know Eric likes that and we have good <laughs> we have uh, uh, good home games that will bring lots of people in so, so that's that's a that's a good thing for us absolutely and that, those Kenton Minster as well as the Marin local games against Coldwater you'll be able to see those on at WOSN speaking of relief PD Post coming back in that running back backfield for you 
having him coming back, do you expect him to be the centerpiece of the offense, or is it going to be a diverse attack as uh, well? We, we've, we talk a lot about that. Um, we have with this group. Our skill guys are good coming back. Craig Shane here is up to 210 pounds, a slot guy who missed part that, of the does year. Does that count in the hair or not? Uh, that does not count the hair. So but might, the hair might be at 215. Might be 215. <laughs> um, Aaron Hardin looks coming back after you know 30 catches in, in, in the starting corner. Um, Kyle McKibben was a, was a very quiet guy towards the end, was playing really well. Um, and then of course Petey. Um, so we, we gotta we gotta try to spread the wealth and um, and uh, if the more we can spread it and then 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 but but like you said, uh, as we figure out who can do what and what's our best, what are we best at? You know, you may find Petey getting 20, 25 carries in a game, and then and then certainly if we can get that going, then that opens up all the passing stuff. What's the line looking like this year, both offensively and defensively? Uh, you know, we lo we lost quite a few, but we've got we've got three three. Um, you know, Brandon Four stuff was come back about 20 pounds heavier at center, which is a really good solid. Malave Bettinger, even though he's going to miss the first game with a broken hand, um, is a, is a really good offensive tackle. And Mitch Clooney are the three guys coming back, and then uh, we have several several seniors and and a couple juniors fighting for those. Uh, you know that defensive tackle spot that Mitch Follenkamp is leaving, and a couple end spots, and and so. Um, so we got the guys there. It's just which ones, which ones will actually uh, um, and show us that they can do it. Three straight state titles. Prior to that, a couple of trips to the state championship game where you came up a little bit short. You've set the bar very high at Coldwater. It was high to begin with. Do you ever do you think back to when you took over from Coach Reed and think to yourself, maybe I should have had a couple of lesser well, seasons to kind of build things up or not, you just hit the ground running yeah not not when you not when you've been here with the program and this expectation because of because if we would have went down i probably would got fired so <laughs> so luckily we we continued it on but but like you said coach reed man really set the bar high and got the program really really you know at a, at a point where the expectations are very high every year and and fortunately we've 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 had we've had good players keep coming through and and good coaches and and so um you know those guys do a great job of getting them ready, and, and so, so hopefully we can keep 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 it going. Speaking of Coach Reed, we mentioned earlier this weekend was the John Reed Memorial Golf Scholarship. They raise money for three different scholarships for twenty five hundred dollars. Just another way that his presence is still felt in Coldwater, and another way is the construction project just off the football field, a new facility not only for the football team but for the entire athletic department to use here at the Cavalier Stadium. Yeah, it's it's well overdue. Our locker rooms um, basically we still dress at the at the school and walk over, but this is going to be a real nice place, and, and it's and and it's a it's a. It's in this facility that the wrestlers are going to be able to use it. Baseball is going to be able to drop batting cages in it. So, so that's really nice. Um, like you said, the coach Reed uh, set the thing. We had the memorial rock way down in the uh, down by the scoreboard. That kind of is a good reminder for everybody. And the golf outing brings a lot of those players back. Tony Hardiman and saw Big Adam today, and and a bunch of those uh, Corey Clinky and a bunch of those guys that have that have um, you know really really uh, got to know Coach Reed really well and. And um, so that was a good, good, good day today. I think 28 teams yeah. uh, playing, so good, good fun day. All right, we're going to take a break here on the warm-up presented by Community Sports. When we come back, we'll have more from the Coldwater Cavaliers here on WOSN. Welcome back to the warm-up presented by Community Sports. Mark Kuntz joined now by Jack Hemelgarn and Aaron Harlmert, two of the seniors on this Coldwater team. And Jack, first we'll start with you. Midnight practice to start things off. This is mm -hmm. kind of a cool idea. Oh, yeah. Well, Coach brought us in the other day. I think it was Tuesday and asked us seniors about it. And we all thought it would be a ton of fun to come out here, just turn on some music and just have some fun out here. Now, Aaron, we're taping this about quarter after one Saturday morning. If you weren't practicing, you'd be home in bed by now, right? Uh, yes, much like we had the community picnic fireworks tonight and probably definitely be in bed if we had to practice tomorrow morning. Speaking of fireworks, can we expect some fireworks from this cold water offense this upcoming year? Uh, yes, I believe we will. Jack, you fill in the shoes. There's been a great line of cold water quarterbacks reaching back several decades now. Yep. How much did last year filling in for Brody when we got hurt, how much did that help you going into this year, your senior year? I think that helped me out a ton. I mean, just being in there and feeling the speed of the game and how it all works out and you know last year I had great teammates that helped me through it all and I know this year it's the same way so I think it helped me a ton actually. Finally Aaron how much do you think about play 60 club? 
Uh, I think I think about it a lot actually. It's definitely one of our team goals. I mean, play those 60 games, us senior class, we have a huge class, like 24 guys, and winning four straight state titles would definitely be a dream come true. Yeah, to play 60, you've got to play 15 games a year. The only way you play 15 games a year in high school football is to make it to the state championship game, something the last three Coldwater senior classes have done, part of the goal for this year's senior class. We want to thank Aaron and Jack. We'll take a break when we come back. Two more Cavaliers here on the warm-up presented by Community Sports. Full moon at Coldwater, and they've got the footballs flying under the lights as we wrap up the warm-up presented by Community Sports with two more Cavalier seniors. Mitch Clooney on the line, Colin Seitz, linebacker and tight end. And Colin, what's the pressure like on this group of Coldwater seniors? We just talked to, to Jack and Aaron. They, they want to be car, become part of the Play 60 Club. Do you guys feel the pressure, or is that just something you're used to growing up in Coldwater? It's pressure, but it's not pressure. We take one game at a time. And our ultimate goal is to win state and get to the 60th game. But to get to the 60th game, you got to get one game at a time. Mitch, coach was telling us that the skill kids could be really special on this team. As a member of the line, do you take pride and open up those holes and make and allowing those skill kids to make those plays? Yeah, I mean it's kind of easy sometimes with having good guys to make the plays because sometimes you don't need to make that great of a block you just need to make you just need to make a little block so it takes the pressure off us a little bit but Mitch obviously we know how good the Mac is last year three Mac teams won state titles you beat Minster who won the division six title you lost to Marion local who won the division seven title how much does that go into what how you prepare this year to, to try and take home a Mac title to go along with all these state titles uh, well that's definitely one of our goals, my personal goals are win state and win MAC. And uh, sometimes it's harder to win the MAC, in my opinion, and then to get to the state game. But uh, yeah, we're always, we're definitely looking at Marion game. Like that's that's number one. That's, that's going to be a big game because they they got us the past two years, and it's and it's going to be nice to get them here at home for the for a while, once in a while. Colin, you know we've been talking about practicing under the lights. Not only practicing under the lights, there's fans out here watching you guys for the first practice of the season. How cool is this from a, a player perspective to, to have the community support Coldwater enjoys? It's a sweet feeling. I mean, I'm a fan of the New England Patriots, and I saw on Instagram the other day that fans were lining up watching their pro camp, and I look out here and I see under the lights and there's some fans here, and it's pretty cool music playing. And it's just it's a cool atmosphere. Colin, what's going to be the biggest obstacle to Coldwater achieving their goals this year? Uh, we're all going to have to stick together and play as a team. Instead of rising as an individual, we rise as one. Uh, just if we stick together and stay healthy, we can't wait for the season. All right. I want to thank all of our guests tonight, Chip Otten, Coldwater head coach, along with Jack Hemelgarn, Aaron Harlemert, Mitch Clooney, and Colin Seitz. That's going to do it for us tonight on the warm-up presented by Community Sports. Make sure you continue to tune in to WSN all August long for plenty more warm-ups and plenty of high school football coming up this year here on WOSN.